How's it going everyone? In this video we're going to be taking a look at Adaboost. So in the realm of machine learning, you have the ensemble method, which basically means that you take a bunch of weak predictors and you combine them in order to come up with a better prediction. And within the ensemble methods, there are two categories, I guess, and one being bagging, which is used in random forest, and then the other one being boosting. And in boosting, there's really two main ones. There's ada boosting and gradient boosting. In this video, we're going to be covering ada boosting. So ada boosting is similar to random forest in that they will both tally up the predictions in the end. However, for Adaboost, the trees will typically be a single node with two leaves. A, another important fact is when you do the final tally, in the context of Adaboost, the different decision trees will have a varying impact on the final answer whereas for random forest, they're completely independent. This is our data set right here. So we are going to be predicting whether a person is attractive or not based off certain features. So the features we have are weight, whether they're smart, whether they're polite, and whether they're fit. So the first step in Adaboost is to initialize the weights. And initially, all the weights are going to be identical. And so the way to calculate that is you just take the number of features and then you divide one by that. And so we have, did I say features? I meant samples. And so we have eight samples here, and so we divide one by eight. The second step is to build a decision tree with each feature and use that to classify the data. And so we would build a decision tree out of our smart feature. So whether the person is smart or not, we would build a decision tree out of, uh, you know, with a certain threshold weight, I guess you could say, and then whether they were polite or not, and whether they were fit or not. And so we have an example right here. So this is our single node decision tree, and we are going to attempt to classify people as being attractive or not. And the assumption we're making is that if they're smart, then they're attractive, and if they're not, then they're not attractive. And we funnel every single one of these samples through our decision tree, and it ends up classifying them. And if we look at the data here, for five of the cases, it the person was smart, and they were also attractive. But for one of these cases, it was not. And then for two samples, the person was not attractive and it predicted them as being not attractive and that was correct. And so you can imagine different decision trees for each one of our features and they would have a certain amount that they got correct and a certain amount that they got incorrect. And then we take the tree that got the least amount incorrect. And so we're just gonna assume that the smart decision tree was the best one because it only got one incorrect. And the next step is going to be to calculate the significance of this tree right here. And by significance, I mean how much of an impact will it have on the final prediction made by the ensemble as a whole. And the formula for significance is the log of one minus the total error 
divided by the total error and then divided by two. And the total error is the sum of the weights of the incorrect classified samples. And so here we have one sample that was incorrect. And since each sample has a sample weight of one over eight, our total error is going to be one over eight. And once we plug that into the formula, we get 0 0.97. So keep this number in mind because we're going to use it later. Step number four is to update the sample weights so that the decision tree will take errors made by the preceding tree into account. And the way we do that is we calculate the new, a new set of sample weights. And the one that the sample weight associated with the sample that the previous tree classified incorrectly is going to end up being higher. And so the formula for that is sample weight times E to the significance. So the significance is 0 0.97. And we end up getting 0 0.33. Then we want to modify the samples that it corrected correctly to, they say, classified correctly. And the way we do that is we multiply the sample rate by e to the raise to the power of the negative significance. And the new sample weights for the correctly classified samples are going to be 0 0.05. If we draw that out, we end up getting a new column right here, which is our new weights. And if you end up adding these numbers up, you'll notice that you get a number smaller than one. And for that reason, we actually want to normalize the result such that when we add them all up, it'll become one. And uh, just to highlight the fact right here, so that was the sample that it classified incorrectly. And it has a new so sample weight of 0 0.49 and the rest have sample weights of 0 0.07. The next step, step five, is to form a new data set using our new sample weights. And so I want you guys to imagine that we have a roulette table and this roulette table will have slices or pockets corresponding to the width, a, a width corresponding to the sample weight. And so the sample with the largest weight, which is 0 0.49 in this case, takes up almost half of the roulette table. And then what we do is we select numbers at random. Since our new data set is going to have the same number of samples, in this case eight, we are gonna select eight random numbers and they will randomly fall in one of these pockets. And because 0 0.49 takes up such a large portion of the roulette table in our new data set will we're likely to end up with multiple copies of the sample that was incorrectly classified and so i drew it right here to highlight the fact that our incorrectly classified sample shows up four times in the new data set And then what we want to do is we want to repeat the previous steps, steps two through five, until the number of iterations matches the hyperparameter. In sklearn, this is the number of estimators. And then the last step, which is once our model is completely trained, we are going to make predictions on the test set or data outside of the training set. And the way we do that is we take each of our decision trees, each with its own significance, and 
we get them to classify the data. And depending on the label you're trying to predict, in our case, it's just a uh, binary label. So you, either you're attractive or not. And so we'll end up with two groups, but it's possible that you end up with more groups. But essentially, all the trees make a prediction. And then you add up the significance of all the trees in the same group. And so we group all the trees that predicted that the sample would corresponded to a person who was attractive, and then all the trees that predicted the person was not attractive. And then we sum up the significance, and we end up going with the one with the largest significance. And so to our left right here, 1.98 is larger than 0 0.96. And so the final prediction made by the model is going to be that the person or sample is attractive. Let's take a look at how we'd go about implementing the Adaboost classifier in Python. And so we'll be using the Adaboost classifier from the sklearn library. We're also going to need the decision tree classifier because we're going to be using decision trees within our, our ensemble. And just to make this easier, I'm going to be using the breast cancer data set from the sklearn. And uh, obviously, we'll be importing pandas, numpy, and then some other functions that we'll get into later. If we just want to take a look at our data right here, oops, I forgot to run this. You can see that there's numerous features here, right? Like the mean radius of the tumor, the mean perimeter, the mean area, things like that. And we are attempting to classify a tumor as being malignant or benign. And because this is a categorical uh, label, we're going to use the label encoder to encode it as ones and zeros. And I believe that if I printed this, yeah, one is malignant and then zero is benign. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to split the data set into a training and test set. And then we're going to build and fit our model. Like I mentioned previously, n estimators refers to the number of trees in the forest or ensemble, and then the max depth of the tree here is one. Now that it's trained, we can go ahead and predict the values for the samples in the test set. We use a confusion matrix to evaluate the performance of our model. The value in the top left corner is the true negative rate which means that our model correctly classified a tumor as being benign. The bottom right is the true positive rate, which means that our model correctly classified a tumor as being malignant. And then the top right is the false positive rate. And so our model predicted that it was malignant, even though it was benign. And then the bottom left is the false negative, which means that our model predicted that it was benign, but in reality, it was malignant. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and uh, be sure to subscribe.